What's happening guys, it's Shane here and in today's video we are going to be talking about the highest paying medical degrees and also medical careers because in medicine it's pretty obvious which career you're going to go into depending on which degree you get. Now this was a highly requested video, the one I did a year and a half, two years ago did extremely well and people really wanted me to go over different careers, you know you left a bunch of comments down in the comment section telling me certain careers that you thought I should include in the next video. And so in this video I will be including different careers and if you're somebody who is remotely interested in a health career or a health degree because not only am I going to go over different degrees and careers but I'm also going to give you hints and tips on how you can choose the best career or degree for you because there is a ton of other careers in the medical field outside of the ones that I am going to mention in this video and a lot of them are amazing so with that being said right after you gently tap that like button let's go for 3123 likes on this video and also hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out and let's jump right into it number 10 on the list is going to be a medical or health services manager now this one is a little bit different than all of the other ones on this list because it's mainly business related it's basically learning the business of health and basically you have to have a good understanding of both the clinical as well as the administrative or the business side of healthcare. and you might be working at a clinic or a nursing home or a hospital or even in an outpatient setting Healthcare, especially in the United States, uh, for better or worse, is incredibly complicated. There's so many different middlemen, intermediaries, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. And being able to understand the business of healthcare is a valuable skill. Now, you can become a health services manager with just a bachelor's degree, but usually they're going to require you to have a master's or more. Now, the most common pathway to get into a position like this is actually already being somebody who's working in healthcare. So, maybe a nurse or a pharmacist or a doctor, etc. And then you basically decide that you want to work in a management position. Maybe you don't like the way that your hospital is running things and you want to change that. So you want to take over that management position and make things better. And so you would likely do a program in healthcare management or business management and then move into that position. It is very, very difficult to understand how the healthcare system works in the United States, because like I said, it's so complicated without actually working in healthcare yourself. However, you can get into this position without working in healthcare. I uh, really don't recommend doing that because you're just not going to understand how things work, but some people do end up going that route. And with this one, you make about $104,000 a year, and it has a projected growth of about 32% over the next 10 years, according to BLS. Number nine on the list is going to be a very common one that we've talked about quite a bit on this channel, and that is going to be nurse practitioner. One of my favorite careers, you can basically prescribe and diagnose, and you don't have to be under the supervision of a doctor. So you can do a lot of the stuff that physicians can do without having to go through that ridiculous amount of schooling and then residency. And not only do you not have to be under the supervision of a doctor, but in some states, nurse practitioners can actually start and run their own practice without any doctors involved at all. Now, there is two different options here for nurse practitioner. You can get your master's degree, and that's the most common option. But some actually go on to get their doctorate degree, and that's basically a doctor doctorate of nursing practice. Of course, if you get your doctorate degree, your scope of practice is going to get bigger and you'll probably make more money as well. But yeah, with this one, you'd make about $117,000 a year and you would expect about 45% growth over the next 10 years. And when you see numbers like that, absolutely ridiculous numbers, 45%, when the average is about four to 5%, that tells you that not only do they make a lot of money now, but there's gonna be a lot more demand in the future. And so you will very likely make even more money in the future as inflation goes up. Number eight on the list is going to be optometrist. And this is the person that I went to when I got my prescription for these glasses for my nearsightedness and stigmatism. So that is exactly what optometrists specialize in. They help people with glasses as well as contacts. And with this one, you would get what's known as a doctor of optometry degree or or OD. They don't say DO because that one is already taken by a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Now, when you look at the numbers on this one, it says they make about $118,000 a year, and it's only growing at about 4% over the next 10 years. And that's why on past year's list, uh, it didn't rank nearly as high because that projected growth was a little bit low. However, after doing more research, after some people left comments, really insightful comments, by the way, uh, about this one, I think that BLS is actually a little bit 
off. And the reason for that is because people's vision is rapidly deteriorating because we're spending so much time looking at TV screens, computers, phones, tablets, etc. So this one was actually higher on the list of my top ranked healthcare degrees and healthcare careers for that reason. So I do look at your comments. I do listen to you guys. I'm pretty sure I read every single comment on the channel. There's just no way that I could respond to all of them. That would be a full-time job and I still don't know if I'd be able to do all of it. But yeah, thank you to whoever left those comments. Number seven on the list is going to be my personal degree, my personal career, and that is pharmacist. Now, I'm not gonna get too far into this one and I'm also a little biased and I've talked about it so many times, but pharmacists make extremely good money. Um, the way you'd get into this is you'd get your PharmD or doctor of pharmacy and then you would become a pharmacist. Now, the most common type of pharmacist, and this is the one that pretty much everybody thinks of when this topic pops up, is a pharmacist that works in a grocery store. However, there are actually 49 other types of pharmacists that pretty much nobody knows about. So if you want to go into this, make sure you do your research on it. A lot of people go into this one because let's be honest, it is one of the easier doctorates to get. And then on top of that, they make really, really good money, about a hundred and $28,000 a year. Now there is a lot going on in the world of pharmacy right now. Uh, there's this thing called provider status that they're trying to get through and that's going to create a ton of uh, new jobs for pharmacists. And that basically increases the scope of practice of a pharmacist, very similar to what a PA or a nurse practitioner would be able to do where they are in a limited capacity able to prescribe and sometimes maybe even diagnose. So this is still up in the air. It kind of depends on what what state you live in some states allow pharmacists to do more than others but yeah there is a lot happening in the world of pharmacy right now and it's very exciting for people like me who tend to nerd out on that kind of thing and if you think about it pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare professionals so being able to increase their scope of practice is a really good thing because you can pretty much go and see a pharmacist at any time if you want to see a doctor you might have to wait weeks and even if you want to see a nurse a lot of the time you might have to wait like 30 minutes or an hour but with a pharmacist unless they're really busy, you'll probably be able to talk with them within a few minutes. Next one on the list is going to be a chief nursing officer. And this is basically a position where you kind of combine nursing with a little bit of business and management skills. And basically you are going to be the person who oversees the entire nursing unit of a hospital. Now I actually had a pharmacist friend. He was uh, one of my preceptors at one point where his wife was a nurse, but she only worked part-time while they had kids. And then after the kids were out of the nest, uh, she decided to work more and she ended up becoming a chief nursing officer. And he was kind of an old timer and he would joke about how, you know, his wife started working and all of a sudden she's making more money than him. So he would always jokingly threaten to quit if we didn't do what he wanted. It was, it was totally a joke though. He was a really funny guy. And he would basically say, one of these days, I'm just going to walk out on you because my wife makes so much money and I don't have to work anymore. And they do make about $132,000 a year, which is fantastic. And on top of that, they estimate that it's growing at 32%. Now, interestingly enough, you don't actually have to be a nurse practitioner either at the master's level or the doctorate level in order to get into this position. You can do it with just a BSN or a bachelor's level nursing degree. However, many hospitals do prefer you to have at least a master's or maybe even a DNP, which would be a doctorate. Number five on the list is going to be a podiatrist. And this is somebody who is an expert on all things related to the feet, ankle, and lower legs. Now with this one, you would probably get your undergraduate degree, some type of bachelor's, then you would go to graduate school, get your DPM, and that's the doctor of podiatric medicine. And then on top of that, you have to do a three year residency. So with this one, you are looking at 11 total years of schooling and then training. Most of the other ones we've already talked about on this list are a lot less than that. But with that being said, you will be making about $134,000 a year. So yeah, that's a lot of money. And this is one of the highest paying medical degrees and medical careers out out there. Number four on the list is even higher paying, and that is going to be dentist. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about a general practitioner dentist in this specific case, because the other type of dentist is going to come later on down the line. And dentists are basically experts in all things related to the mouth, teeth, and different oral conditions. And there's actually two different degrees you can get to become a dentist, which are exactly identical. I'm honestly still not sure why they call them different things, but one of them is a DDS and the other one is a D. MD. That is a doctor of dental surgery and a doctor of dental medicine. Now with dentistry, you'd usually get your four-year bachelor's degree and then you'd 
go to dental school for another four years and you usually don't have to do any residency or any extra training on top of that to become a general practitioner dentist, right? So it's eight total years and you make an absolutely mind boggling $164,000 a year. And on top of that, there's an option to make even more money, which I'm going to go over in a few minutes. But the next one, number three on the list is going to be a nurse anesthetist. Now, this is actually the highest paying type of nursing degree and nursing career, unless Unless you become like the CEO of a hospital or something along those lines, but it has a really weird path in order to get there. So there's many different ways to become a certified registered nurse anesthetist or CRNA. Some people will try to go into it after just having a bachelor's. Some do it after they get their nurse practitioner degree. They become, you know, either a master's or a doctorate. But basically the way to get into this is first you would get your BSN that takes, you know, on average about four years, although you can do it faster than that. Then you would work several years in usually an emergency room type setting you have to work at least two years to be considered to get into a program like this and then you would do a program that takes two to four years usually more on the four-year side because they're moving more towards nurse anesthetists becoming doctors so this is basically an eight to ten year process although during two of those years you'll be working and getting paid for it and the reason it's such a long and arduous process is because you are going to be anesthetizing people, which is incredibly dangerous. Administering anesthesia to patients, which is basically just putting them under before surgeries, is an incredibly complicated process. And you have to have a ton of training to even be considered for the job. But for all of that, they make an absolutely mind-boggling $189,000 a year. So one thing that's really great about this is if you go into nursing, there's so so much flexibility on what you can do with your career. First of all, there's a ton of different nursing specialties. So if for whatever reason you don't like whatever specialty you're in, you can pretty easily switch to a different one. On top of that, there's so many different routes for career advancement that you can take. You can either go more of an administrative route and become even like the CEO of a hospital in many cases or uh, get higher on that list. Or you can become more specialized clinically and get your nurse practitioner degree. You can get a master's or a doctorate, or even become a nurse anesthetist. So in that way, within the confines of healthcare and nursing, a uh, nursing degree is incredibly flexible. Number two on the list is going to be a dental specialist. So before we talked about dentists that were general practitioners, if you get additional training, you can become a dental specialist. Now there are many different types of dental specialists. For instance, you've got prosthodontist, orthodontist, uh, dental surgical specialists. However, in this particular case, we are going to be talking specifically about orthodontists. Now, this is relatively rare, so there wasn't any data I could find on BLS. However, Glassdoor has them making about $220,000 a year. And generally speaking, it takes about 10 years total to become an orthodontist. So that's going to be four years for your bachelor degree, four years to go to dental school, and then an additional two years in residency training. So whereas dentists, aka general practitioners, basically Basically, they just do a bunch of different things related to the mouth, etc. Orthodontists focus on basically giving people braces and Invisalign. And generally speaking, whether you're talking about doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, anything, specialists tend to make a lot more money than generalists. Number one on the list, no surprise here at all, one of the highest paying professions out there, that is going to be a medical doctor. Now, there's actually two different degrees you can get to become a medical doctor. The first one is your standard MD degree. And then the second one is a DO or doctor of osteopathic medicine. They're actually merging these two program tracks into one. So five to 10 years from now, there's basically going to be no difference whatsoever. However, at this point, MDs do make slightly more money than DOs. Um, it's also a little bit easier to get into different residency programs because it tends to be a little more respected. However, DO school is a little bit easier to get into. So there's pros and cons to either one. But with that being said, doctors make so much money that it basically breaks BLS. BLS has them making over $208,000 a year. And this is $100 per hour, and that's basically the highest that they go on BLS. However, I can tell you that physicians are likely to make much more than this, probably more like $250,000 to $300,000 a year. A 
Of course, it depends on what specialty you go into as well. So for instance, orthopedic surgeons make around $482,000 a year, whereas family medicine makes about $231,000 per year. Now, there are certain subspecialties, which I went over in a video where I talked about the highest paying medical degree professions, and they can make up into the $800,000 a year range. So yeah, this one is clearly number one on the list. Uh, orthodontist does make a little bit more money than some of the specialties that you see with medical doctor, but most of them make far more money than orthodontists. However, for that, you will have to go through a ridiculous amount of school and training. There's four years of undergrad, and I will say here that in order to get into medical school, you have to be an excellent student. I have seen personally with my own eyes, people fail to get into medical school four years in a row, and they were pretty good students. So four years of undergrad, at least with intensive work to get your bachelor's degree. And then on top of that, if you're lucky enough to get into medical school, that's another four years. And medical school is also also very difficult and then on top of that you have to do a residency that's three to seven years and then sometimes people even go back to do a fellowship that's like one to three years so overall you're looking at like 11 to 18 or 20 years of total schooling and training so yeah they definitely deserve to make a decent amount of money for all of that training and let's not even get into the amount of student loans that they have to take out and that's actually another part I didn't really go too deep into on this video but there are certain careers certain degrees where you have to take out a ridiculous amount of money in student loans and in some cases you'll also have to take out a business loan as well because you're likely going to start your own practice dental orthodontist and sometimes medical doctor depending on what specialty you go into do fall under that category so that's another thing to keep in mind yes you're going to make more money with some of these top ones but you're also going to go into more debt and it's going to take a lot longer and be probably more difficult as well so yeah as always you know this this is a personal finance channel. That's why I kind of focus on the money side of things when it comes to different careers because everybody's interested in that. However, you know, make sure that you're interested, make sure you're passionate about whatever careers you're looking into. Don't go into something just because you're making a lot of money or anything like that. Money is an important factor. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely is important. Don't believe anybody who says money is not important, but it's not the most important thing. It's one of the many things you have to consider. Check out my other videos right here i made them just for you go ahead gently tap that like button hit the subscribe button ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts comments criticisms etc that you have on the video and i will see you next time